Welcome to Between the Brackets. I'm your own Karen. And my guest for this episode is Peter Meyer, who is a board member of the Wikimedia DC chapter, as well as a research economist at the Bureau of Labor Statistics. And in his free time, he also runs the wiki Inventing Aviation at econterms.net slash aero, A-E-R-O. So he actually has three different connections to MediaWiki. Peter, welcome to the show. Thanks. Good to be here. Uh, first of all, where are you located? I'm in Washington, D.C. Yeah. Um, so I said you have three connections, although it wasn't totally clear from the intro that I believe for your for your job at the Bureau of Labor Statistics, you make use of MediaWiki uh, in some capacity. Is that true? Well, when possible, yes. There are wikis within the government, and I'm on an injured agency group to pay attention to that and to encourage it and support it. Uh, the Labor Department has a broad wiki, and I pushed hard for the statistical agencies across the government to have a wiki, and we had that for a while. That was called Statopedia. Yeah, okay, right. I remember you, I, we, we've talked before, we've met in person at several different conferences, and I think you've talked about it. So th that wiki no longer exists? Right. It was hosted at EPA, and we had it for eight years, and then they switched away from MediaWiki. Oh, wow. Okay. When did that happen? Two, 2018. Wow. Gosh. Okay. EPA is the, uh, the Environmental Protect Protection Agency. Um, I guess they didn't protect MediaWiki. They protected it a long time. They were the most forward thinking of the agency. So I give them a lot of credit. They were the one that made the effort and tried it and had a general platform and they had a bunch of MediaWikis. And, uh, you know, the winds blow sometimes for and sometimes against the platform. I wouldn't yeah, know. okay. So wh where is all that data being stored now? A couple of us have backups of it, but it's, oh. not, up it's not uploaded and alive anymore. I get it. Okay, it's not that MediaWiki was replaced with something else. It just went away. Well, you're asking a specific question there. They plan to replace the media wikis with SharePoint, and in some cases they could, but in our cases, media wiki was very much the right thing. So I, I gave specifications of what we would need, and I knew SharePoint couldn't do it, and I was not interested in a long discussion, and they evaluated the cost, but we wanted, you know, equations and categories and several features that are, were not straightforwardly available. So it was not feasible and we did not propose to do it. We, we wanted something that could be available freely across the whole government, which is an idea I have pushed for many years and uh, we don't have one yet. Yeah, okay. Um, is it a matter of money or, or effort or politics? Not, not you know, small, small P politics like inter, inter bureau politics and all that. Kind of stuff. I think point. of it as, uh, I guess I don't know the full answer to why a thing doesn't happen, but I think of it as being more about administrative politics than anything else. But there are other platforms that get preferred. Um, open source and informal ones are dispreferred. Yeah. And, uh, and I think it's very much an accidental. I mean, w when I pushed very hard to get a Statopedia. And when it happened, we did have permission to let in anybody from across the US government. Oh, wow, okay. But to, to really win, we would need something. I mean, to really improve the efficiency of government in this way, I think it needs to be very easy to use and, be, and to get in and, and people should be given a password to it within their first year of starting work. Or you know, they, they should have an account more or less automatically. If each one has to ask, then you don't get too big scale. Yeah, Wikipedia okay. Wikipedia shows it can work on a very large scale. Sure, sure. As as more efficient. Yeah, as do as do various you know U.S. government wikis that exist already, like uh, like uh, Intellipedia, the obvious one, and Powerpedia, and all of that. Um, sure. Those are uh, I know something about those. Those are good examples, but th but they leave some other agencies out. So there's benefits we don't get. There's people whose knowledge we're not integrating with. There are people who can't learn from them. Yeah. Um. Uh. Well. So right. So so. I, I guess it it might require you know a champion, 
at the top, the, not the very top, presume potentially, but uh, you know, someone who, some kind of CTO type figure to, to uh, take on the cause. But uh, all right, that's exactly what I think. And yeah. it would be entirely possible for such a person to see the purpose. The costs are not high, so it's it's not. A, you asked about costs. It can't right. be costs yeah, are not yeah. even worth discussing the question is whether there are benefits and whether they see them and whether there are risks that are seem too large for them it should be easy a, a government-wide encyclopedia for two million civil servants could be re, it could make us a lot smarter and we could compare across agencies and benchmark things and imitate practices elsewhere more and more easily yeah uh when you say two million civil servants is that is that everyone who works for the U.S. government, or is that just people involved in statistics? It's probably not just statistics that you're talking about. Uh, well, that was an estimate I read. I'm sorry, I haven't counted. I mean, I, oh no, I, but I, I mean, I mean, uh, but, but are, are you saying this wiki? Uh, this is a, you're in, in, envisioning something that would be open and potentially edited by everyone who works for the U.S. government. Yeah, or, I like, uh, okay. I like that, that approach w without insisting on every marginal question about that. Well, yeah. I like that approach. There are big ones in the military or in the, you know, across the foreign affairs agencies. There's a big one across the government of Canada, big right. one across the Department of Energy. So yeah. the, big, the, high, the big scale can work. And I think yeah, and that the, there yeah. are gains from it. Yeah, all the ones that you mentioned all, all run on MediaWiki, as far as I know, including the, the Canadian one. Usually the big ones run MediaWiki, I think because it, it, the, uh, the costs and benefits trade-off gets better and better and better at larger scale. OMB yeah. has, runs Max, which is a Confluence one. And oh, okay. all govies have potential access to that. And if I bring up this issue, they will say we could use that. I see, okay. But it's highly segmented in terms of security and it doesn't have all the right features for a kind of easy searchable encyclopedia. It's, it, it, it doesn't accomplish the same thing. Yeah. Um, OMB, I should know that one. That's the Office, right. of Management. Office of Management and Budget. Yeah, okay. Um, so, so you're really, uh, you, you have uh, some, some, some very broad aspirations. I was imagining something that would hold something, I guess, like Statipedia that holds yeah, from what I understand, statistics related information, but you're talking about a, a more general thing, or is it still, or is it really just statistics that you're envisioning? I mean, I guess potentially, <coughs> sorry. My approach is protean. Okay. In that I want it for myself and I want it with a large scale of, of smart people with whom I could cheaply exchange information and easily understand what they're doing and, um, so I, I was thinking of it for my agency and that I, I fought that battle until there were practically bodies laying on the ground get around and I really couldn't win. but then I made an outside speech and somebody suggested well try do it across the statistics agency then you can use some other agency's platform that was fine statistics agencies are a good concept just like diplomatic agencies or intelligence agencies or energy department agencies that's perfectly sensible but we had permission to expand across the whole government. And I thought that was the, that was the, that's, that's where the optimal size is, I think. Yeah. Um, well, we're, we're really jumping into this. Uh, we haven't even talked about what you actually do for your job, but I, I want to, <laughs> or really anything, but I want actually, I want to stay on this topic because this is really interesting. I mean, um, uh, you know, potentially everything relating to statistics ties into open data, quote unquote, you know, there's all these initiatives in the US government and really governments around the world uh, to publish more of their data. And, uh, and obviously everything you do with statistics is, uh, I mean, I'd imagine most things are public information and, and can and should be, uh, you know, released openly. Um, is, is, would you imagine, would you want to use a wiki for all of that too? Or is that the, is that the whole idea? Or is this um, separate from that? Separate from what? Well, I mean, you're talking about, you know, having something that requires a login and is only open to civil servants and so forth. Um, but what about, what about all the stuff that's, you know, open data that you want to get, that you want everyone in the world to be able to see? 
Oh, there could easily be a platform that's more open to everybody. I mean, yeah. I, I create wikis all the time. And so I have some open stuff. The, the, the European agency Eurostat has an internal publication platform where they work together on things. And when something they think is done and ready to publish, they kind of snapshot it. And then they put it on an outside wiki where you can no longer view the history, but it's still a wiki platform. Or at least last I knew they were doing that. I thought that was quite elegant. Of course we can do that. We can publish a lot effectively yeah. written across agencies together to the public. But the, the discussion has to be insiders. Okay. Right. Are not visible to the public except if they file Freedom of Information Act. That, that right. works fine. But the, the reason is that the purpose of the system is partly to compare alternatives and to say, for example, I'm in Department A and I think Department B is doing it better. We should do what they do. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Those, those debates must not be in public or, or people point to the agency and criticize it. And that's then we would have created more costs. We're, sure. we're, trying, we're trying to make everything smarter and that involves networking among people considering alternatives. Right, yeah, yeah. You don't want to be under the microscope for you know, everything that you talk about. But, um, um, well, so, so as far as the statistics that are right now being published, what are you, what's being used for that? What software, if any, or is it just sort of an, an ad hoc way or is it is it is, is most of it online at all or is it just you know published in thick books for government statistics sorry for government statistics yeah yeah well uh, well you're you're you work in labor statistics for example so so all of that kind of stuff can is it accessible online at the moment the agency publishes through databases huge numbers of statistics yeah. organized and, and searchable by various kinds of codes or searchable from its own website. A peculiarity of the U.S. system is that there, each department has a statistics agency. So there's a Bureau of Justice Statistics and Transportation Statistics and Court Statistics and um, Commerce does GDP. We do labor statistics. Those are different. Census is different. In most countries, that would be one big agency with one big data system. We have several data systems, uh, and there are efforts to unify these, make them available in a unified way for researchers, or to combine the metadata so the data could be mixed and matched more easily. Yeah. That's, a, that's kind of different from the wiki question, which is our internal encyclopedia conversation. But yeah, I mean, professionals are doing all that. That the subject you mentioned is very highly paid attention to by professionals. Okay, okay, because there are. I mean, uh, I'm a, you know I'm aware of the limits of media. There's thing. There's other tools like CCAN and whatever, and, and all sorts of proprietary tools also that, that are re really geared for that kind of thing. Um, I don't. Know if, I I don't know if they use CCAN. I guess they do. Yeah, but uh, my I, bureau does not. To my oh, okay. Opinion. But data.gov is run by GSA and offers a CCAN catalog of government data sets. Yeah. And okay. it, it either links back to them or it has its own copy. Usually it just links back. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I still think there's a there's a, a, a use case for MediaWiki with all of those just at a high level, just as sort of a directory, a directory of directories, that kind of thing. Anything that's, um, you, you know, not getting to the specific statistics, but just sort of like a a, a hub for at least find, knowing where all these things are located and all that kind of stuff. Um, oh, I presented on this many times. Sure, oh, really? metadata. Yeah. Like, yeah. Uh, the values can be one, and, uh, zero or one for this variable, except that before 1977, two was all oh. this kind of thing. Yeah. Or, uh, how do you mix and match? Or what, what's the algorithm you use to get from this version of uh, what industry the person works in to that version of what industry the person works in. We could publish that code. A wiki would be pretty good for that. And, yeah. Uh, yes, that is a good way to think about it. That would be, again, public communication. Sure. Okay. Well, yeah, a lot of opportunities that so far have not been taken, but uh, <laughs> yeah. um yeah, that's interesting. You, you, you a, a lot of the times, you, you know, um, unemployment figures come out, and you see, you know, 
editorials and articles uh, talking about these numbers in totally different ways. You know, some people say it's great, some people say it's really bad, and there's, there's so many ways to, to, to spin the statistics or, you know, so many uh, little um, nuances of, uh, you know, what does this really mean and how can you really compare it to, you know, what happened 20 years ago and that, that, all that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, sure. So, uh, yeah, a lot of, uh, <laughs> well, yeah, it's a lot of, uh, I, I guess you could say, well, you, you could say there's a lot of ignorance out there. <laughs> I mean, just, just a lot of, a lot of people not, not understanding a full picture because there's just so much to understand. Um, all right. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> I, am, I, I am involved in research on a related topic, which is, you know, there's pressure on us to get a statistic out early. And then if we keep doing that, then the statistics is volatile. Like there's changes from month to month that aren't meaningful. They're maybe sampling error or, all, you know, just all kinds of things. Yeah. And then they get revised a lot. So the first thing you, you see might be different from the later figure. And I see, yes, the unemployment or, or the, the, the count of jobs, the estimate of the number of jobs, that's yeah. a great data system. I've, I've had it explained to me. It's awesome what they do. But they're at the edge of what's possible, and it jumps around from month to month. So they'll say on the news, this figure was disappointing. Right. Because it's slightly below what they expected. And this particular year has been, there's been a lot of tension about that where it was disappointing and then it was great and it was disappointing. You have to average them together yeah. to, get a, to get a sense of the trend. It's not like the truth is so volatile. Sure. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, it's, uh, I'm sure it's been a, an interesting last uh, uh, 18 months for you as a, uh, <laughs> someone involved in statistics. Um, um, so uh, I guess that, that that's a good way to get uh, to what I maybe should have started with it, which is what, it, what is it you actually do, uh, as a, uh, as, as a research economist there at the government? I'm in the office that produces productivity statistics and yeah. they're productivity statistics by industry basically every year. And aggregate ones more frequently quarterly and then those are revised and i'm not working on the production of those statistics but various ancillary things like what's the method what if some data isn't available what do we do in the covid period when it's extremely uncertain and volatile um and indirectly potentially on what kind of computer systems we could use i have some role in that but it's a research position. And then I also have my own research. Yeah. Which um, is part, part time, part of the job. Oh, okay. Academic kind of part of the job. Uh, all right. Um, wh wh what's your background, by the way? Uh, do you have training as a statistician? Economist. Uh, I was a software okay. engineer for some years and then I went to grad oh, really? school for economics. Yeah. I have a PhD in economics. Yeah. And I joined a research group of other people with a similar background. Yeah. Not okay. Statistics. There are groups that do statistics. Our group is economics. Yeah. 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 Do you, do you use your programming background for anything like R and all of those tools and so forth? I work in R. Oh, okay. And in Stata, which is another statistical programming language. And, uh, and in Python a little bit, but not frequently, but that's really quite useful. Yeah. I can't, I can't keep up. There's so much going on. There's so many new packages and so many things to do, but I have projects in those two languages. Yeah, okay. Well, those are still the big ones, I think. Uh, yeah, I've heard of Stata also, right. Um, uh, cool. Um, so... Um, well, I don't know if we if, uh, if there's more to talk about with uh, with your day job, but um, I, I, well, maybe we'll get back to it. But I I I want to ask about what we'll get back to it. Yeah, okay. Um, I, I want to ask about this uh, this wiki you run on the side called Inventing Aviation, which is uh, very interesting. Um, 
uh, yeah, what uh, what can you say about that? It, it takes a, a little background. I, I had studied, I, I had worked in Silicon Valley and I had a sense of how technological change happens. And I had looked and read and discussed the research about what makes open source technologies possible and where do big inventions come from? And I came to this view that a radically new invention can spring out of open source activity. And I had a set of major technological changes, some of which came out of that, yeah. so, out of a, some kind of open scientific activity. And one of them was the airplane. The airplane is invented by hobbyists, basically. Yeah. And then uh, I had meant to study several cases, but that one turned out to be just amazing. There's so much data available and so much great stuff is already written, but it hasn't been databased in the way I wanted to do it. So this site has every aeronautical patent that I and my research aides can find uh, up into World War I from any country because we want a complete picture of, of that world of early aeronautics and aviation before there is an airplane and then yeah. once there is an airplane and then once there is an airplane industry and not just patents but scientific publications, popular publications, exhibitions, conferences, clubs, the new companies. I want to get that yeah. whole picture because there's so much data on it. So that site has a page for each of those things that we can find. Yeah, so a page for each person, for each patent, for each uh, conference and so forth. Yes. Uh, yeah. Um, so I, I guess I should have uh, asked about this before. I mean, you know, previously when talking to you, uh, you know, previous years, but uh, is this connected to your work? I mean, I, I, is this, is this the, uh, the the side research that you were talking about? I see. Okay. I always imagined that this was just an interesting hobby for you. Um, so, I mean, uh, I, can, I can sort of guess at this myself, but what, what are the applications of this kind of knowledge uh, in, in, for, for your, you know, for your real life work or for the government to, uh, to, to, to know about? Well, it's not central to what BLS does, but the research managers have always approved it because I can make the case. We want to understand industries. We're measuring industries all the time, but we don't have a study of where industries come from. Yeah. And then that's, that's one line of, of how it relates to our activity. You know, we're, yeah. we're studying a certain category of things, industries, where, where do they come from? Well, we could study the prehistory of them. And another issue is how do we handle open source things that are not priced? Oh, yeah. Which yeah. are like economic activity, generating useful product. Yeah. So we should be studying that. And, and when you're an academic in this area, you don't have to necessarily be the only unique expert with complete knowledge, but you need to be integrated with people who are expert. And so it's good to be active in it. So that always seemed fine. It just isn't, um, it isn't our production activity, but it's my background research, yes. Yeah, okay. Yeah, it is interesting. I mean, uh, to, to, to get to the, the concept of open source, you know, if a, if a large company switches from using Windows to Linux, then, then it looks like the GDP dropped, if I understand the economics, the economics of it correctly, because uh, now there's less money being spent. So, so, you know, it looks like it's a net loss for everyone, <laughs> I guess. Um, but I mean, what can you do about that? Is there some, is there some uh, numerical way of, uh, of, um, of talking about, um, you know, increases in productivity and so forth from making use of open source? The accountants, the national accountants who work on that issue, I'm not one of them. They are very good at it and they can incorporate if the data is good enough that the costs to the company that's doing production went down and so its value added went up. Yeah, okay. 
All right. And yes, that's not it's not so hard. They often don't have company data; they have <laughs> industry data, so it can look it, it can it can look like a productivity improvement properly yeah. measured. Okay. It might be an improvement over here and and a decline over here because you know some other activity went down when the, this replacement happened. It's complicated. I, I didn't prepare for this question. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> no, that's a good, that's a reasonable answer. It's not as, it can not be as done hard well. as I it's thought. It's hard to do it perfectly. And it's hard to put it in price indexes also. Well, yeah. Yeah. There's price indexes for software or operating systems. And they, and they try to take into account R and D that improves it. And if the price is zero, that's tricky, but the, right. they often find that it is comparable to something that is price is not zero or that it has support. I see. Support okay. Running. Okay. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, yeah, uh, which I guess would be Windows for the case of Linux. You pretty much have to just look at whatever Microsoft is charging. Or get, I don't know. Uh, maybe. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, so, so what has uh, studying, uh, you know, uh, innovation, innovation in aviation uh, taught you about open source or just... I mean, it's not really open source. It's open source is just the, the current term for this thing, which has really been going on for millennia. Um, um, you know, it used to be, you, for, it, it was really only a brief period of time where people even thought to, to charge for ideas, I guess you could say, um, which is, and you, could, you could call all software basically ideas. Um, so yeah, I mean, what what is what have you or others learned from looking at uh, at aviation specifically? I guess I, I can't connect it to software very directly. One, one difference that's important is that open source has a legal definition. There's a, there's a legal uh, copyright associated with things that are in the public domain or available. Whereas I'm looking at a period much further back when the thing, the, the technologies of early aviation were often patented, but nobody enforced the patent. And that is a different thing. Okay. But, but a lot of the dynamics are the same because the people involved in either activity are just trying to make progress. They are not always trying to take ownership of something. Uh, what have I learned? That a aviation attempts to make a flying machine go a long way back and there are huge numbers of them and they grow exponentially from like the 1860s. Oh, really? Way back. Yeah, yeah. And a lot of, thing is, a lot of things are repeated and duplicative. There's a lot of creativity. And that's part of what makes it so interesting is that you, you could, it's a technology simple enough that often you can look at a work of that time and understand it and see they're, they're trying to take what they have and make a flying machine out of it or, or make progress toward a flying machine. Uh, so there's lots of creativity. There's lots of activity. That activity is growing smoothly, either measured by publications or by patents for decades and decades, it integrates. There are some open source things, like there's people organizing communications by letter, organizing visits, organizing exhibitions, organizing conferences. So that is similar to open source, I think. Yeah. Open source software can be packaged and redistributed much more easily than a design for a tangible thing. So that's different. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, so, so that's well. So that's interesting. It, it really in the eighteen sixties was when things got. I mean, that's that's quite a bit earlier than most people would think. You know, when things really got uh, got going. It goes back further than that. Well, it, yeah, sure. I mean, it's this no longer clearly exponential, and it's often associated with balloons, which are known to fly, and so a lot yeah. of people are doing the balloon thing. And part of what I'm trying to measure is what is it, what is the switch in activity from yeah. ballooning toward fixed wing craft look like? Yeah, okay. Um, and then also there were flapping wing craft. Yeah, right. That's right, right. It's that's, awesome. It's funny. 
and there's more than 100 patents. Oh, it's really? Not, it's not small. They really wanted to have a bird. So they tried to make Yeah, that. sure. No, that's the that's the cliche uh, going back to the Greeks, I guess, or something. You know, all these people, you know, everybody, you know, flight was the, was the big holy grail. And everybody just assumed, you know, how could, if you want to fly, you have to look like a bird, basically. Um, yeah, which, which, from what I understand, caused a lot of deaths over the, uh, over the millennia. Some. Um, yeah, it's so interesting. And, and this is the, 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 the minimal amount I know about all this stuff. Leon, Leonardo da Vinci also had some, uh, some uh, I don't I wouldn't say a role in it, but he was, he, he had some attempts uh, to make a helicopter or something like that. He made a design, uh, yes. His helicopter design, I think, is pretty good. And he made a flapping wings kind of design, but he didn't build things. He wasn't working with a technical person who would build things and he couldn't build things or, or didn't. So, and his work was actually hidden for some hundreds of years. So the idea of a fixed wing craft yeah. is already in circulation when his work is rediscovered I in, see. Okay. in the 19th century. Yeah, yeah. So he's, he's very early, he's very insightful, but he wasn't influential on those earliest people. Yeah. Um, are, the, are the Wright brothers overrated? Were they more just like the, uh, the, the, the popularizers rather than actual innovators? They're awesome. Okay. They made great inventions. Yeah. So I guess the way I'd frame that is not to say there's anything wrong with them, but rather... <laughs> that people are missing the great insights that they're building on because we naturally forget the people who come earlier. And, and the, in, in the study of prehistories of things, this is just very common that there's a huge, there's a whole iceberg of thing that happens yeah. before that tip that everybody sees and then they remember that. So sure. yeah, I could tell you about their inventions. Um, oh, the, oh, the I, Wright brothers, yeah. yeah. But they're building on people and, and they're building on, uh, uh, they're very familiar with previous work. Yeah, okay. okay. They read it, they understood it, and they're unusually good toolsmiths. So they tried things. They tried a bunch of things and lots don't work. And they find some of the previous work is wrong. And they find some of the previous work just isn't like done very well. So they implement better. And they make key physics discoveries too. Or, de or design discoveries, I guess is the way you put it. Okay, okay. All right, well, the, okay, that's fair. Well, they're not, they're hardly, you know, just uh, just good marketing people then or something. They really did. Uh, not at all. They're taking a lot to it. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, it's, it's so interesting. The 19th century was, there was so much innovation happening back then. It's, it's pretty staggering to, to, uh, think about it to put it all in context um uh you know even even compared to the, the there's a lot obviously in the 20th century also but for, for so many things in the, the 19th century i i mean it do you feel like do you feel like there was a different uh attitude toward innovation or toward openness or something at that point i, I don't know if you could really say that you know if only we did x y and z like they did back then things we, you know um uh, we'd be inventing the light bulb again or something but um um yeah i mean was there a different was the culture around it different i i i don't know how much the culture is different uh i i bet there are people who are very expert on that comparison i guess what I can say is that as a historian, I'm drawn to that period from the late 19th century, like especially after the US Civil War until World War I, when there's a long period of relatively few wars, more yeah. and more trade and integration, more and more science, and the building up of scientific institutions we can understand, and the building up of a science and technology that I can still understand. In the 20th century, every last thing is too complicated, and there are too many pieces and too many experts and too many points of view. I, I can't handle it. So I feel like I can get clarity on things happening in the late 19th century, and I focus there. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. Yeah, sure, sure. And, this, and the, the ones who are technologically sophisticated then, they're just like us. 
Their yeah. phrasing is a little different, but they think like we do about what progress is going to mean. And they are so they're a little more they're a little more confident and deterministic. The the world around them is not quite so chaotic and messy with trade-offs and attacks. So the idea, let's make a thing that records sound. Let's make a thing that lights up. Let's make a thing that flies in the air. Can yeah. we communicate by wire from this place to that place? It it doesn't have the same moral complexity. And right, uh, right. Yeah, yeah. And I appreciate that. It makes it possible to study the inventive things I'm interested in without quite so much of a chaotic mess. Everybody involved is safely quiet now. You can look at their documents. You know, none of it's secret, none of it's copyrighted, and a lot of it's readable. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's interesting. You, 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 when you say like us, you mean they, you, they, they're, they're like techie, they're like techies, they're like the software engineers of today or something like you, you can feel a kinship, uh, you know, uh, yeah. Feel a kinship in their sense of technical progress. Right. And um, yeah, and the, their moral agendas are not always wonderful, but they are often trying to make progress in the same way we would. Yeah. Right, but in, right. in a simpler context with less resources and simpler issues. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> uh, yeah, I mean, I imagine even, even at the height of the uh, aviation co uh, community, if you can call it that, it wasn't, I, I don't know, it wasn't more than a few hundred people, maybe. I'm counting. Well, no, it's thousands. Oh, really? It, okay, okay. But uh, we're really trying to count them. And yeah. That would okay. Be, that would be impossible if it were hundred thousand people. Right. Right. But we should. We're able to track who got a patent, who made a publication that anybody noticed, who gets cited by historians. Those are classes of people who are significant in, at some level, in early aviation history. And yes, it's possible to get every last one of them into a database someday. Yeah. Okay. I, I mean, how? How? Uh, what? How, how far along are you at this point? Like what percent of the total information do you think is already there? Uh, way more than 70% of the patents, but I cannot tell because we keep finding more. But okay, it's, right. it's like way more than half. I, I guess I'll put it that way. Yeah. So in a statistical sense, it's not a little sample. It's something close to a complete census, but it, it's not all of them, but it's a lot of the relevant patent. And we yeah. have tremendous bibliographies that include everything that the relevant people thought was relevant across many several languages um so a kind of yeah. near near completeness is possible yeah um yeah that's so neat uh, you're you know you're creating a, a body of knowledge that hasn't existed before probably didn't even exist back then um it's a little sharper than anything anybody has now I mean, there are lots of historians who understand this very well, but yeah, the pure data is going to be sharper and more complete than anything yeah. that is available now and right, better than anything that was available then where they had only a partial view of yeah, it. Yeah, each person could only could only have so much of the, see so much of the knowledge uh, at the time, um, sure. Yeah, I mean, it, that's, uh, the, you know, to get back to, to MediaWiki, that's, that's one of the, the things that's great about using media, is, I mean, there's studies all the time that get into all kinds of, you know, history and so forth, where people for a brief period of time, of time try to assemble a, a, a data set like the one you, that you created in, in spreadsheets or whatever else. And then after the study is over, then that's it. I mean, the, 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 the data just goes away. I don't know what happens. Um, um, but here, you know, once once you've assembled all the data, then it's there and and it's well, potentially in perpetuity. You know, you, you who know who can really say, but uh, um, yeah, and you know, the, the available to other scholars and, and so forth. Yeah, I'm an eventualist. It'll get a little better. Yeah, every week, forever. Yeah. Um, it's asymptote to some kind of truth or the best truth that we can ascertain. That's what yeah. I hope. Yeah. Are there other people who maintain it, who help maintain it now outside of 
uh, if you stopped working on it, would it still keep uh, improving? Well, I know I have a couple of uh, assistants who developed a lot of expertise who work on it. And I, I, I team up with people, plenty of scholars are happy to send stuff. And so, but no, it's, it's my project, it's my site. Yeah, okay. But the, the information on it can be downloaded and used by anybody. It's not proprietary. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, and I, and I should say you make, you make good use of uh, uh, page forms and cargo. Uh, so, you know, that's, that's good. Um, uh, um, it there's another, in yeah, <laughs> sure. um, there's another interesting connection um, to wikis and uh, MediaWiki, which is, you, you know, um, obviously media, MediaWiki is open source, but, um, and it, it ties into open source, but it also ties to some extent to open data. Um, you know, uh, it's, it might be a bit of a stretch, but I think you, I, th I think you've talked about this, um, that, uh, you know, it's sort of like the Wikipedia community, also the, the aviation community and the Wikipedia community have some commonalities um yeah i mean i don't know if you have any thoughts on that specifically uh well i mentioned once before i i'm an economist and normally i'm working on data but it's also possible to work on theory and i did work on a theory of what open source people are trying to do and how they network together because it doesn't look like an industry I don't think it just looks like cooperation. So I have a model that I think is helpful for thinking of an early aviation inventor and a wiki contributor as similar, that they, they want the world to be a slightly different place. They, yeah. they want to create something in that world. And it's not that they're trying to make money from it. They want something more direct. They want it to actually happen. And they're willing to invest a little bit of their own time and effort or equipment or money or whatever to make it happen and if they're aligned with other people a, a key insight in my model is that the people don't have to agree on exactly what they're doing one of them is making a balloon and one of them is making a flapping wing aircraft yeah but they agree that they want a place to launch it so they agree on a field or they agree on a club or they agree on a making a newsletter um or they traded technology that's useful to both of them. And they would do all that for no money at all because they want, it. they're willing to invest some of their own time and effort. And likewise, Wikipedia exists because people want it to be there and they're willing to put something into it. Information, source code, DevOps, um, money. Yeah. There we go. Yeah, okay. Uh, that's interesting. Sure. Um, it, yeah, it makes sense. I mean, I, I guess it, it, to some extent it ties into the philosophy of what exactly, what it, what is altruism versus uh, self-interest? I don't know if it ties into that. I mean... You don't have to think of them as strictly altruistic. Yeah. You could think of them as pursuing their own agenda and in a friendly exchange with other people. And then sometimes they exit. By the way, the Wright brothers are an amazing example of people who are in that community. And then once they knew they were going to make the airplane, yeah. they broke away. Oh, okay. And, and that's one of the ways a startup industry happens. Yeah. And I think it's happened in other cases. The social media, the thing we now think of as social media used to be a cooperative world of bulletin boards and Usenet and then when it becomes the pos the prospect of there being an industry, there are these little breakouts. And it yeah. might get become a big industry that looks totally different. And then people forget what came before, that 70% that, that of the technology comes from some earlier time when the people were working without prices and revenues. Yeah, yeah. And and I guess tied in with that, they, they, they no longer want to share their findings they they start you know turning everything to trade secrets and all that and i'm stuff. not expert of the wright brothers in particular but with them it's very sharp 
Yeah. They integrate, they're recognized, they give, they receive, and then they they see it happening over the course of a year that they're, they're the frontier, they are going to have the winning case, they file a patent, and then they enforce their patent. And it's like the first time for fixed wing aircraft that anybody enforced a patent. Uh, you, wow, it's okay. A, it's a discrete event. Wow. Wow. Um... Could, could they enforce it around the world or was it just in the United States or what? They won their cases in the U.S. Yeah. And they seem not to have won their cases anywhere else. But I, I am not expert on their European cases. But they were able to make airplanes in Europe with their subsidiaries. But they did not prevent other people from making airplanes in Europe. Within the U.S., there was a patent tangle where they kept okay. winning the cases and it prevented... Uh, some exhibitions and other companies from blossoming. And it was yeah. a surprise because people did not expect that from them. But they, they, it's like they, um, they, they got to the golden pot at the end of the rainbow and they thought, we'll just take it. Right. And, and they, were, they were following, and it, 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 was, uh, it, it was a change in circumstances that changed their behavior. Uh, and yeah. they knew they knew that previous creators of industries like Alexander Graham Bell and Thomas Edison, Thomas Edison repeatedly had done this same thing, and the world was a better place. So they they did have a vision; it would make the world a better place if there would be an airplane manufacturing company. Yeah, that made lots of airplanes and made them available, made them well, made them cheap, and they would own it. It would be the right company. Yeah, well, yeah, it would right with a W. Right, it was spelled with a W. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, did they actually? Did I guess they did? I, you never hear about them as entrepreneurs. I, what, what happened with their company? The way compressing the story to the amount I understand. Yeah, they were they were gifted at making craft with their hands. They were not particularly gifted at running a manufacturing company, and it. They had difficulty with it, and yeah. they ended up kind of uh, merging and selling out. Yeah, okay. Um, one of them dies young, and the survivor has is a millionaire. Uh, oh, okay. From the patent, and, he, and he's or respected, from... and he's from from the company. But but they are not running a company for the long term. But it becomes Wright Curtis. Yeah. And. And many things are named for them in, indefinitely after that. And they get a lot of credit. But no, they, they were not major industrialists for long. Uh, yeah, okay, okay, well, all right. Um, yeah, it was, uh, it, Wilbur was the one who, was, who, how, who lived longer. No, he was like, I seem to, no, oh, okay. No, he got Warfield? sick and he died young, but he, he was the one who's more likely to be known in the early years when he did. Yeah, I remember seeing some uh, exhibition, like he, he, wore, he wore a certain beret and it became like a big thing in, in France or Europe or something, like everybody wanted to, to look like him, to dress like him or something. They dressed uh, formally, which is odd for people who are working on like greasy equipment. But they seem to always dress formally. And I, oh, really? Okay. They, they had aspirations even, even before and they made the it. People, they were thought of as competitors to French aviation. And so I think they were not expected to be popular. And then they go there and they're kind of nice and they're organized and they can fly really well and they dress well. And they were kind of popular, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Um, cool. Um, yeah, it reminds me. Sorry, not to do all these digressions. It reminds me of the, there's uh, the, uh, the the famous homebrew computer club in uh, Silicon Valley, which is where the the Apple guys got their start, and some less well known people also. Um, so yeah, yeah. Oh, I think it's I think it's so similar, and I, I I tried to do some research on the homebrew, mostly from books, but I actually interviewed two of the people who were in the club. Oh wow! Okay. The youngest people in that club are not still not that old. Really? Yeah. 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 Like Steve was... Jobs would, went to those meetings and Steve Wozniak and Lee Felsenstein. And there's a, a lot is known. Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, that's a, right. Right. That's just a, mu a much, that's a much bigger <laughs> industry to try to track <laughs> um, the, uh, the beginnings of the, the 
PC industry. But, but it, was, uh, it was an open sharing context. Oh, okay. Yeah, sure. Right, right, right. And, and in that case, the Steve Jobs, Steve Wozniak story has a, a excellent parallels to it, where Steve Jobs, from pretty early, wants to make a company. Oh, okay. Wants to go big. Yeah. And Steve Wozniak, the maker of the Apple One, does not want to do that. Oh, really? Yeah. But he teams up and he takes the risk. And, and the, within a couple of years, they're a big company. Yeah. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. Um, and now they're the, I don't know if they're the biggest company in the world, but uh, they, they're up there. Um, yeah. Uh, okay. This is all <laughs> uh, very interesting stuff. Um, uh, I, um, I'm not even sure. I, 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 I guess we have to get back to media week, even though this is really, uh, uh, you know, a whole, a, a, fa a fascinating topic. Um, uh, I, uh, I had an interview with, uh, with Tom O'Neill, um, uh, who I, I'm sure, you know, he runs a group called media wiki in government. Um, are you involved in that in any way? Right. He, uh, well, I just support him. He's really, oh, okay. he created it and we have a mailing list and we have monthly meetings. Oh, so you are, well, okay. That's what I mean by involved. I mean, you, you attend meetings or, yeah, and so forth. Um, so yeah. Okay. I mean, so do you actually use MediaWiki other than the, this, uh, the inventing aviation site? Many you... personal sites. Okay. Um, and I'm a Wikipedia editor. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, and yeah, and Wikisource and Wikidata. I, I help hold edit-a-thons uh, with the DC chapter. Oh, really? Cool. And yeah, I, I, find, I really enjoy that. And I'm always learning something about how it works and about some field where, you know, we have an edit-a-thon about art or about vaccines or statistics or anything, and it's always educational. So yeah. that's... That's rewarding. Um, there, I, I know you've done something with uh, with coronavirus, aka COVID nineteen, uh, on on MediaWiki. What 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 happened with that, or what's going on with that? COVID was a real shock to economic statistics. Yeah, and sure. It, it, a team was created to try to keep track of what does the economic literature say about what's going to happen here? Not what does the news say, but what are economists saying? That people who have theories or have data on what is actually happening in this crisis in 2020. And it was suggested I could be on the team, which is a great uh, opportunity. And I took it. Yeah. And I suggested that we have... Um, that we keep a substantial bibliography of the works. And I was uh, in this area. And um, then we did some data science on them to try to use our existing bibliography to, to predict out of new working papers, which might be of interest to our team. Anyway, it, I was able to get an agreement that we just put the bibliography on a media wiki. So it was a case where I was able to use media wiki in the yeah. context of work, partly because it was an emergency and we could move fast and there wasn't anything secret. We were just collecting abstracts and, and, and evaluating which ones we should be summarizing and reporting on. Yeah. Okay. And then I was able to present that to CDC at one point, CDC economists. And that was, right. that was terrific. And then a couple of them took a look and then I got some feedback and I got some input and that's a good relationship to build on in the future. But that's the kind of thing we want to make easy, this cooperation across agencies. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. That's, that's great that the software, is, I mean, you know, obviously that's one of its strengths is, is for ad hoc type of stuff. Um, that's great that you're able to use it. Does the wiki still, sorry. It exists. Like you're yeah, about to say something. Not, yeah, okay. It's not public, but I was imitating what I'd done with aeronautical publications. Oh, interesting. So that same idea. Yeah, sure. I, I wasn't looking for a big invention, but rather just to keep track of a bunch of papers and abstracts and be able to summarize them and classify them and use categories and 
and topics, those are both running cargo where I've got a, a, a pattern for the database information I want to have about publications. It's very simple, but it means yeah. I can count or use a keyword and it and it'll get a report on itself. Like a, a keyword page can can give me a report on flapping wings aircraft or on right or on those papers that are specifically about the schooling loss that children around the world have suffered because they couldn't go to school for a year. Sure. That's thought to have a big important economic effect and there are several papers about it and we want to make that a kind of keyword and and grab papers about it. Anyway, yeah. same same idea. Yeah, so that's interesting you were able to use the same data structure or a similar data structure for the for papers in the two different uh, data sets. Um yeah, cool. That ties into, uh, for people listening at home, he's nodding his head. Um, uh, that ties into um, uh, something I've been uh, doing a lot with and thinking a lot about is, is the, the reuse of data structures within MediaWiki. And I have an extension called uh, Page Exchange that's meant to, uh, to enable that where you publish your, uh, your package of, of templates and categories and forms and everything else. And then it and then anyone can install it on their wiki. Um, so that, that's really neat to hear that you were able to, you know, despite these very disparate, disparate uh, 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 um, subjects of these two different data sets, that the, the, there's a data structure that works for both, which means that potentially it can work for a lot of other things too. How, how does somebody make a package like that? In page exchange, uh, yeah. it's pretty simple. I mean, the standard way is to put everything in GitHub, so you have one file for each page. Um, if, you, if 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 you follow so far, you mean each form and each template will have yeah a each each wiki page, whether it's a form or template or an act or a a, day, a page that holds a query or whatever else, gets its own page slash file within GitHub or wherever you want to put it. But generally, GitHub is the place for that kind of thing. Um, and then you make a, a JSON file. Sorry for people who don't care. Uh, <laughs> you make one final, one last uh, page, which is a, a JSON file, which which describes the package in a, in a structured way. It describes the the package, and it lists all the pages that are in that package. Uh, and then <clears throat> someone in on their wiki just needs to put the URL for that JSON file in their local settings. Uh, and then they they'll get an interface for letting them uh, install that package, and then they can also upgrade it or uninstall it. Um, you know, so it sort of works like uh, I mean, sort of works like a package manager in Linux or something, where you where you can do all these things once it's defined. Uh, yeah, that's yeah, it. Yeah, that fits this purpose. Yeah, we want to get better and better and better at setting up wikis that have um, bibliographies in them. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. That's the that's the hope. That's the, the, the one of the pain points, I guess, right right now is you know just getting all that uh, populating a, a wiki once it's uh, once you've created it with the stuff that you know you're going to need. Can I mention an issue? I mean, one uh, it was suggested that maybe all this should be on Wikidata. That's and interesting. Thought, sure. Make it global. In, right. Instead of saying they can download it, why not put it in a place where it's immediately available to them? But the thing is, there's so many quirky stuff at my end. I'm keeping an abstract or I'm keeping some comments by me that I don't wish to make public. Yes. Uh, or, or it's really super specific about patents and aviation and it doesn't, it shouldn't be taking up space on a global server. Or I want yeah. to refine it without having to ask anybody's permission. So instead, right. I think there should be a lot of these feeder sites. Both the ones I mentioned are sort of, they're, they're sources of ferment and creation, and they should link to Wikidata, or maybe Wikidata should link back to them, but they should be some separation. So anyway, I'm, I'm prepared to put anything about patents up on Wikidata, but basically I think they should link back and forth and not not be too glued together. But anyway, yeah. we, have, we have links back and forth. Oh, okay. Some, but you know, just here and there where it where it is clearly relevant and appropriate. 
Yeah, I mean, that's, yeah, you've exactly described the situation. I mean, Wikidata has benefits, uh, obviously, but it, it um, uh, but it has drawbacks too. I mean, you can't, you can't uh, control the, um, the data structure really, you know, you can't, I mean, you can't just make up new properties for the, the, to hold the specific data, uh, you know, pieces of data that you want to hold. Um, so yeah, I think it does make sense. Uh, I think that's going to, that's going to happen a lot in the future that, that people will, um, maybe 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 making use of the external data extension where people will put some subset of the data on wikidata or or tie into data that already exists and then have the wiki page be a sort of wrapper around that around its corresponding wikidata page because obviously i mean this yeah, within a, a standard wiki there's a lot of things you can do like querying and drill down and all that stuff that you can't do on wikidata also i mean um yeah. Uh, yeah, it's good to, uh, to, to have the, the combination. Um, uh, he's nodding his head. <laughs> um, I push the idea that every patent ever should have its number on data, but we can't put all the information about the patent there, and it wouldn't be of general interest. And there are a bunch of reasons you couldn't put every possible like the, yeah at least i mean you have an index to it and then people who are specifically working on that patent like my little project it could link back to that yeah i have no no idea what the rules are about inclusion in wikidata uh, and what you know what if anything gets deleted <laughs> uh but uh sure i mean you there's no guarantee that whatever you put will i don't know Will uh, stay there, depending on, of course, on how uh, how uh, how obscure the information is. Um, yeah. Um, so um, so Wikidata uh, talking about Wikidata gets us into talking about Wikimedia, which you you've uh, talked about being a board member of, but you have a more uh, more immediate connection to Wikimedia, which is that you're now the uh, one of the organizers of this upcoming Wiki Conference North America, uh, which is coming up in October. Um, I should have the dates here. Um, October 8th to 10th. 8th to 10th, okay. online this year, 2021. Oh, okay. And it's it's going to be strictly online. Yeah. Well, um, uh, it'll be it'll be online with local events like local picnics too in places where people can gather. I see. Okay, we will support that. We have a little funding for that, and we want there to be local in-person events. But there won't be one big conference, although there have been for several years. Wiki Conference North America has gone well, and this is the first year I'm an organizer. Yeah, um, uh, yeah. I've never attended a Wiki Conference North America. You know, let's try to do this time. I don't. I don't know. Yeah, I used to go to Wiki in North America. I am indeed in North America. Yes, I'm in the, in that continent. Um, <laughs> I've I used to go try to go to Wikimania. Not every year. I've been to four or five of them. But um, uh, yeah, I don't know. Is it basically? I mean, how would you describe it? It's basically uh, the same kind of concept and and uh, motivations as Wikimania, just with the just you know more specific geographical focus yeah selected to be of interest to people working on north american wikis north american languages yes north american issues um it tends to be less techy but it doesn't have to be but there's a substantial tech track at every wikimania and um, right I'm, I'm hoping we can do that but it's not clear that we will oh okay be there won't be it, a because it's so community centric it's you're saying it's just whatever people want to talk about is what they'll what, what they'll talk about. We are open for submissions. Please yeah. go to wikiconference.org. We're welcoming submissions at least through September, probably into October. Uh, we're we have an academic peer review option to get a, a thing academically accepted. Oh, that's pretty neat. Yeah, yeah we, we want to have some uh, academic tracks. We have started to receive submissions. Yeah. That's wikiconference.org. 
Uh, yeah, yeah, cool. I'm looking at it now. Yeah, it looks, uh, it looks really, really neat. Oh, I remember seeing it before. You're actually making use. I was very surprised to see this. You're actually making use of people probably won't care, but you're actually making use of, uh, of page forms on on uh, this site also, no? Can't For submissions, it. there's a form. Yeah. Yeah, we'd like to have some tech talks too for for you or other enterprise wiki, semantic media wiki, cargo people. It would be good to have some presentations. I'm sure we will have at least one from the foundation, but it would be it would yeah. be good to, to mix it up or you know make make some kind of workshop. We, we'll have some training. Number of people have expressed interest in training, and it seems like Wikimania tends not to have that. Like a simple lesson, yeah. how do you start in a wiki source? You know, how, how do you how do you get a book set up to transcribe or yeah. Yeah, that's sometimes a little harder to do online versus in person, but uh um I don't know. Uh it, I'm sure it's useful uh you know in any context, in any um medium. Um yeah. Um uh, yeah, cool. Uh, yeah, I'm looking through all the submissions uh, that have been uh, done until now. This quite there's a lot. There's over a hundred. It looks like. I mean, um, oh, I don't know oh, where you're looking for 2021. We only have one. Oh, active. okay. I'm sorry. Yeah, I, I missed the years. We uh, have several test cases. Yeah, and in previous years there are lots of submissions. Yeah, I guess okay. some of those could be reactivated potentially. I don't know. Well, no, no, yeah, no, I, was, I, was, I didn't notice, <laughs> even though they all start with the year name, I didn't notice. Um, yeah, um, well, cool, uh, yeah, everyone should, I get, I mean, you know, I, it's ironic to have a, to have a wiki conference North America that's online, so presumably anyone can attend. Um, sure, sure. Uh, but uh, yeah, I mean, I, I guess, I guess anyone listening to this should, should uh, consider going um yeah and it, a couple of the issues are of maybe special interest that we really want to do the translation better than ever before we want to make it easy for somebody to just show up and and hear or at least read subtitles in spanish yeah for almost all the presentations so we're inviting people to make videos in advance and we will help and then we can subtitle them in advance or add a audio track i think subtitles are more realistic in spanish or in french yeah okay oh, oh those are the other languages right and, um, yeah yeah cool um yeah that should be really fun uh i'll yeah i'll try to go there, there's also the uh wikimania is, is coming up which is also virtual i'm not planning to well, we'll see. Maybe I'll do both. Next month. Right. Yeah. I mean, I mean, there's obviously a big advantage to having it online. It's not the same, but, but, you know, just being able to show up and see stuff and, you know, have your ramen while you, uh, while you, uh, yeah. watch the videos. Yeah. Uh, or yeah. Maybe I'll you can uh, register now. I plan to register today. Oh, you're you're gonna register to, for the you, for the global Wikimania, right? Oh, for Wikimania, okay, yeah, all right, maybe I'll do that. Um, yeah, cool. So yeah, that's wikiconference.org. Um, um, yeah, are you gonna present at that one? Probably a lightning talk. As an organizer, I will probably be too nervous and trying to make myself useful and not not try to make any big presentation. Yeah. But hopefully somebody will present from the U.S. government on the U.S. government media wikis and, and people will present from the other enterprise media wiki context so that it's not all about Wikipedia. Yeah, okay. Okay, well, right. Yeah, that's always the, that's always the, the hesitation I have is not knowing, uh, I mean, not knowing whether anybody really cares, but, uh, you know, media wiki outside of wikimedia sites um uh, but uh yeah no i i, I think all the stuff is, is very interesting obviously um um yeah well okay maybe i'll i too will present something there 
oh, that would be really good. It would be All good right, cool. to some tech presentations or or presentations on how Wikimedia can be can, can be useful in in organizations. Which I yeah. Think oh, you mean Media Wiki? Oh man, you said Wikimedia, or maybe that's maybe you meant Wik Wikimedia. I meant Wiki. Media Wiki is what yeah. I meant. Right. Okay. Yeah. I've yeah, everybody makes that mistake. <laughs> I just made that mistake in the uh, I can't remember. I think last episode. Um, yeah. Okay. Cool. Um, well, yeah, it's really, uh, it's, it's, it's really interesting hearing your perspective as, uh, well, I guess from, from three different perspectives as a, as a media wiki user, as a Wikimedia user, and then as a researcher into, uh, the whole world of, um, of, you know, hobbyists and, uh, open culture, I guess you could even say, I don't know. Sure. Um, yeah. Uh, anything else you want to talk about? I think we covered a lot. I think we covered a lot. Yeah. I've had a good time. Thanks for your support in the past. It's always good to be at a conference with you. You have interesting things to say. It's very beneficial. And that's, uh, yeah. Thank you. Likewise. Yeah. Yeah. We've, uh, we've met in we've met in person before and online i hope we'll meet in person again before too long to, um, uh, and online um cool well uh yeah uh thanks peter it was great talking to you thanks for being on the podcast oh it's been a pleasure thanks you Ron. okay i can